Dogs coming on a blitz. A nice pickup. Green gets rid of it. And caught on the deflection. Put six on the board, Night fans. That is a touchdown. Haggerty is running. Hit and run. But it's right to Carter, who flips the second for one. Over to first in time for a double play to end the inning. Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the All New Sports Show, brought to you by Roger G. Taylor and Associates, right here on WHIG TV. Folks, my name's Wes Bradshaw, his name's Ed Green, hey there. and we're here to bring you the best in Tri-County sports action mm -hmm. all across the globe as well. You know, we don't just limit this to just oh, no. the Tri-Counties. That is our area of focus. expertise yes. and focus, yes. Folks, we're going to get you uh, across the pond tonight. We're going to head down to Athens, Georgia. Uh, talk a little, talk a little of the American rules football that you people uh, seem to like so much. They do. They do. They do like it. They do like Apparently it. Apparently, there's some sort of draft coming up this Thursday uh, night. A draft. I did not know about this until yesterday. Dollar draft. Might be dollar fifty domestics. It's a Thursday night. It might be. It is a Thursday night draft <laughs> night. All right, folks. We're going to get to that as we go along the show. But first, there are many different ways to communicate with us here at the All New Sports Show, and Evergreen's going to tell you about them. Yep, you're actually seeing them on the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, of course, you can hit us up on the Twitter at All New Sports Show. He is at West Bradshaw 21. I am at Edward Green. You can also find us on Facebook. A lot of good stuff on there. We are sorry, on Facebook. We're All New Sports Show. We're also All New Sports show on Instagram, on YouTube, where you can actually find a replay of the show, as well as all of our interviews and highlights. You can go to The All New Sports Show. If you want to hit us up on our podcast, The All New Sports Show, colon, the podcast, you can find us on NGSCSports.com, Podbean, the iTunes Music Store, and many, many other places. So there's a draft Thursday night. DraftKings.com. Anyway. We're, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're waiting to hear back from them on more stuff. Awesome. There's a very short window we are promoting. Awesome. And that window has ended. It's never ended in my book. Oh, of course, because you love them. Windows never close in my book. <laughs> we just have to do this now when we talk about them. Uh, uh, okay. okay. And moving on. But we can openly say, once again, folks, this show brought to you each and every week by Roger G. Taylor Absolutely. and Associates, as well as our other fine sponsors, which you will see scrolling across the bottom of your screen as the show goes on tonight. We do ask if you're going to shop, shop locally, and shop with our sponsors. Absolutely. All right, folks, we're going to start you off. It's springtime. So what's that mean? That's right, hockey playoffs. What it's true. It does mean that. What ifs, folks? That's right. That, uh, that that Southern American sport of hockey, which now takes place uh, south of Los Angeles only, it seems like. In Las Vegas. Sure. Las Vegas is going to get a team, Vegas, everybody. Baby. How about those hurricanes? Anyway, uh, we are going to start you off with baseball, folks. America's pastime. And also right now we are smack dab. I'm not going to say in the middle of the Big East race because nope. it is actually down the stretch they come. We've got a champion. Paper champion right now. Paper champion. Need one more win to secure everything. Yes. But, folks, the battle for the second, third, fourth seed in the Big East is electric. Oh, my goodness. Hunt, Northern Nash, Rocky Mount, all still within striking distance of that two seed, which usually in the playoffs, the two seed's going to get you a home game in the first yes. round. And the way baseball's been this year, that's big. Folks, we start with Fike. The Golden Demons of Fike, they lead the Big East Conference right now. Kind of a surprise leader of the Big East. We felt they were going to be stronger this year. I think a lot of people, us included, really felt this was going to be the year Northern Nash took control of the conference and kind of ran it from day one. The pitching's been there for the Knights. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind, of, it's kind of been a weird combination. Some games the hitting's there. Some games the pitching's there. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get them both there at the same time. Yes. And that would be really uh, good. Uh, yeah, that would be really good, but sometimes that is eluding the Knights. Yeah. But taking a look right now at Fike, they are red hot. Nine wins in a row. And uh, they've got two big ones this week. Uh, like we said, they basically need to win one of these next two, and they are the conference champions. They sit right now at 7-1. Mm -hmm. Nobody can catch them with one loss. Everyone else has at least three losses. Mm -hmm. So uh, one win this week. 
fight for your conference champions, but it's not going to be easy, Ed. No, absolutely not. As they have uh, a home date with Northern Nash coming up this Tuesday, and then on Friday, the Wilson County Derby at Hunt this time, where they did go and get a, or sorry, they had a home win against them just a few weeks ago, 2 nothing. And I think more to your point, Wes, on this nine-game winning streak they're currently on, you know, in a matter of about three days, they played Nash Central twice because they had to do a kind of a makeup game. The first time at Nash Central, they win two to one. The second time they come home to play Nash Central three days later, they win eight seven. This is a team that can do it either way. They just haven't that often found a way to do it both ways yet this year. They did have, of course, a big 15 to two win at Southern Nash. Southern Nash, not the top competition though in the Big East, although they may end up not finishing last. If they, depending on how this last <laughs> week goes, um, but right now everything for Fike in front of them, and they're being led right now by Brandon Winstead, who is having himself one heck of a season. I saw him pitch against Northern a couple weeks ago. He really shut them down, and then of course he has the no hitter against Hunt in that two nothing win. Really, just kind of coming to his own in a, in a league where we thought you know Northern Nash would have all the arms, especially Derek Carter. Now for, for Brandon Winstead to come out and maybe be the best pitcher in the league this year is very impressive. Well, and what we have learned and what we kind of knew, everybody had at least one good pitcher this year in the Big East. Mm -hmm. And that's something, you know, that's kind of a typical Big East thing. Everybody has some pitching. Mm -hmm. Usually the team who wins the conference is the team that has the best pitching unless they're just that dominant hitting the baseball. Right. Over the last few years in high school baseball, dominant offenses have taken a back seat. Yes. Mostly due to the change of the bats. Mm -hmm. The BB core has really killed off a lot of those you know, your Some eight your, home runs. well your your eight hitter and getting hold of one and driving it off the wall yeah. every other at bat. That doesn't happen quite as much anymore. So it has come down to pitching. So usually the team with the best pitching is going to win um, in a, a long term race at the end of the day. Now obviously you get the tournament ball, anything can happen in the tournament. But um, Fike, their pitching has really come through this year. The offense has done well, I'm not going to say they've been. They, I'm not going to put them in a good enough to win category. I'm going to say it's been a good offense this year. Uh, certainly, I mean, but it, on another point, they've actually scored fewer runs than Northern Nash this year in, in Big East play, and actually overall as well. I think that might be a little surprising with Northern struggles and not to get off by just a second. Mm -hmm. But but Northern Nash leading the Big East both overall and conference with runs scored is, is sort of amazing to consider that they're also not winning the conference. And, and we'll, ra we'll talk about this, and I think in a minute, and we've brought it up a few times now. Mm -hmm. The thought was if Northern Nash could put up runs, they'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's not so much the case so far. Well, but even that said, I mean, when you look at the total runs, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a good number. I'm sorry, 40, 46 runs for Northern in eight conference games. Right. That's solid. Yeah. Those are still not the great offensive numbers that we've seen in the past. Very true. So, uh, you know, yeah. it, it's been interesting. Northern has, Northern has kind of found a way where they, when they win games, it seems they they like to win games seven, eight, nothing. Yes. So they do put up runs, but then when they get in these tight games where runs are at a premium, that's where they're still shown to be lacking a little right. bit in the in the hitting department. Um, I said, I mean, it's just come down to there. There's, I don't think there are really any great hitters in this league this year. No. Um, you know, now certainly, in, you know, some of these are aberrations. There, there's not a Brian Goodwin. Yeah. Um, you know, there aren't very often. No. You know, uh, at Northern Nash, you know, Northern Nash had a great squad. I believe it was 2007 and 2009. They just ripped the cover off the baseball. You know, that, that they don't have that kind of a lineup. You know, Southern Nash doesn't have a Ricky Howard hitting in that lineup who's hitting two grand slams in a game for them. Uh, you know, the, the, the Wilson schools who we have seen just absolutely clobber the baseball over the years, they're not putting out historically great lineups. So it's coming down to pitching and defense. I know at Rocky Mountain, defense has been an issue for them at times as well. Uh, at other places, it's been an issue this season. 
Fike is just Fike's played the best baseball when it mattered. Yes, and, and they're right now they are deserved the league winners. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we said, they are the, your paper champions at the moment. Um, if they can defeat Northern Nash, uh, do you think Fike will give them a uh, a uh, champions uh, champions entrance at at Hunt on oh, Friday? No, I don't think that would happen. So much the Premier League can teach everyone, oh, Edward. There's so works. much. Yeah. The Walk of Champions would be amazing. I, I don't. I don't think that's going to do it. No, I really don't think that. You know, they all stand on their Lambo sides, hold their bats up. Yeah. Uh, let them walk under the uh, under the bats. I think it will. It will be an amazing sight. Would City do it for United? Yes. Oh. Hmm. I believe they would. All right. Um, we're just taking a look here at the standings as a whole. Uh, again, Fike does lead the conference at seven and one. Northern Nash right now in that two hole mm-hmm. at five and three. Hunt and Rocky Mount tied four and four in conference play. Southern Nash and Nash Central also down at the bottom. They're both tied at two and six, which is kind of amazing, I think, for Nash Central losers of eight straight. When you remember the first uh, week of Biggie's play, they, I believe, beat Rocky Mount two to one to open the conference mm-hmm. and looked great doing it. And they've only gotten one more win since then. It was against the Northern Nash. <laughs> yeah. So take from it what you will, folks. Basically, uh, Northern Northern control their own destiny. Certainly. Definitely in that two spot, they do have the one game lead. Um, Rocky Mountain coming up on Friday night, as you said, Fike on uh, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, so Northern, I really think this week could spell a lot for them coming up. Mm-hmm. If they can get two wins this week, mm-hmm. that sends them into the playoffs on a high note. Um, of they course, go they in, also have the Big East tournament so next week. Oh, are they actually doing the Big East tournament this year? I thought they were. It seems like every year the Big East tournament year gets canceled or rained out or something. I, don't know. I, 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 I do not believe. I don't believe in the Big East tournament I know. until it actually shows up That's on my fair. doorstep. And I happens. have a lot of things like that. <laughs> It's just the Big East Tournament. Been, trust me, it's been that way for at least 15 years since they started doing the Big yeah, East Tournament. Right. So, uh, the, first, the first year, the finals were canceled between Rocky Mountain Rose because both teams' playoff position was already uh, set. And because Ron Vincent and Danny Weaver didn't want to wor- burn a pitcher on a Friday Makes when sense. they started the playoffs on Tuesday. They Makes didn't want to burn to a pitcher. So you know how guys were good. So it was like, no, nah, no, nah, we're good. So you know, I believe that you was... You don't need to make us a trophy. I believe fine. that was uh, 2001. So. <laughs> Good times, man. Good times. Um, Rocky Mount this week. Rocky Mount is such the Jekyll and Hyde team of this league. You don't know what you're going to get. You're either going to get good Rocky Mount, which is strong pitching, timely hitting, decent defense, or you're going to get Rocky Mount who gets home stole off of them twice in the yes. same inning. You guys saw last week in our moment of wow. Wow. Uh, that was in the, the first edition of the North Rocky Mount Derby for baseball season this year. Northern Ash did steal home twice in the same inning against Rocky Mount. Yeah, and, and basically the less said about that, the better, I think. Uh, but Rocky Mount does have a chance to kind of get back on it a little bit. Uh, they do have an away game against Southern Ash on Tuesday. And then, of course, on Friday will be part two of the North Rocky Mount Derby, this time at Rocky Mount High could, against Northern. Could be huge. Look at those schedules. It absolutely you, could you've be. got to figure. Now, remember, this is the Big East where nothing ever happens the way you think it's going to happen. Rocky Mount will be the favorites to go beat Southern Nash. Mm-hmm. They beat Southern Nash if Northern cannot beat Fike. They're both five and four. Suddenly they're both five and four, and Friday night someone is playing potentially for a home playoff game. And here's the other thing. Hunt, you figure they beat they go to beat Nash Central. They play you, Fike. You think they play Fike. They play Friday. Fike. So Northern the most difficult schedule remaining Absolutely. of these teams. Um, Rocky Mountain Hunt, who are also battling for that second spot. On paper, should have wins mm-hmm. after Tuesday night. Um and then Friday will be uh, Friday will be crazy, mm-hmm. and uh, at this point we are planning it being on, uh, at Rocky Mount Friday night with the yes. only sports show, mm-hmm. uh, folks. I may be making my season baseball debut right, right at the end. My wife said if I get my chores done, <laughs> I can go call baseball. So thank you, honey. Oh, uh, so, so we'll cute. see how that works. Uh, we have a birthday party on Saturday. That's it's the, true. It's the princess's birthday is on Friday. Yeah, so. I love it. Um, I tell you so what, we're hoping to bring you that game, Wes. Fike doesn't have an easy road either to the championship. No, they don't. I mean, you say Northern probably is not favored in their game against Fike, but there's also no reason they can't beat Fike. No, no. And, you know, then they have to go up against Hunt at Hunt in that rivalry game where... Hunt, Hunt could be playing 
Not only not only to spoil their conference championship, mm -hmm. they could be playing just to even maybe get in the playoffs. At this point? I mean, because it's only top three guaranteed. Fourth might still get in. But look at those overall records this year. Yeah. That is good. where that is where the loss of the non conference games due to the rain yeah. is going to come back and bite somebody. I mean you look right right now playing four non conference games. Yeah. Four. I believe it was four. Well, it might have been the three. Season, then they yeah. got their, their Easter games in. Exactly. But I mean, they yeah. lost at least four games due to rain. Mm -hmm. and, and those are games, yes, they could have swung either way. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's brutal, man. When suddenly at the end of the year now, you know, they always say, well, the non-conference doesn't matter. Y yes, it yeah, does because of the wild card. Yeah. So, you know, that could make or break somebody. So... It's it's definitely definitely going to be an interesting run in to right. the week, uh, but we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to some really good baseball. Um, forecast this week looks like Wednesday and Thursday might get some rain, mm -hmm. so Tuesday's looking good. Friday's looking really good. Maybe we'll get in and not have any more rain delays. What I hope so. Think? I hope what so. Of course, seeding day for the uh, the NCHSA state playoffs will be May 9th. And uh, once those brackets are released, we'll of course be bringing you those on the All New Sports Show social media. Uh, we'll be bring, posting those most likely on Facebook as well as on our uh, Twitter feed, uh, letting you know where, and not just for baseball, but uh, as well as uh, softball as well. Right. Let's get you just a quick Biggie softball standings update. Uh, Hunt and Fike, Fike having a good spring season. It's top of the table right now. Both are six and one in Biggie's play. Fike, uh, Fike maybe got hit by that rain a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, Nash Central four and three, Northern four and four, Southern two and five, Rocky Mount zero oh and eight. Rocky Mount best left unsaid this season. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, so, so good job though. We got some, we got some decent teams in our area. I just. I think if Northern, with the arms they have, once you get into the playoffs, those arms could propel them deep. But I just don't know if the that mentality is there. When you referenced earlier that Jekyll and Hyde mentality, and I think Leonard Allen kind of knows that a little bit, head coach in Northern. I, I think he knows that you might just be flipping a coin every game and see what you have. Because, you know, one of the things when we saw their loss against Spike and it was a complete different 180 turnaround against Rocky Mountain when they won, was their defense. Mm -hmm. Their defense was atrocious against Spike. And they came back Northern, or against Rocky Mount, I think maybe made one error. It's all up there, but you know, the best teams are the consistent teams. We take a look back, those we always reference this little era where it was kind of our latest golden era of Nash County baseball. Yeah. I mean, you had 2007 Northern Nash going to the Eastern Finals. 2008 Rocky Mount wins the state championship. 2009 Northern Nash is back in the Eastern Finals. Right. Those teams, you knew what you were getting. Mm -hmm. The pitching was going to show up. I'm going to tell you, the you know, second time around for Northern Nash, especially in that 09 team, Tyler Joyner was the only guaranteed, you know, we know what he's going to go out and do. Right. Luckily, he went out and did it and may have been yes. the best pitcher in North Carolina that season. That um, but Northern still had two, three, four pitchers after Tyler Joyner who they were going to at least keep you in a ball game. Yes. You know, they, they were nowhere near the dominant level, but they were going to keep you in a ball game. Um, and the bats were smoking and they smoked the whole season mm -hmm. the bats were consistent they were hitting that was or Eddie Lozner at that time the head coach at Northern yes. Nash he had some great lineups had some really good baseball teams with Rocky Mount you know the state title team Jim Leggett until Benton Moss broke that record was a school leader a uh, wins leader he had Benton Moss as a freshman yes. who's turned out pretty good and then not you had oh, not a quarter by Fox of course but then you had a kid named Chris Barry who at the end of that regular season stepped in and solidified the number two role for Rocky Mountain. Right. He became a big time pitcher in the playoffs for the Griffons mm -hmm. and that helped propel them because you had three pitchers that Pat Smith trusted. Oh yeah, which is huge in the playoffs. Exactly. He, he trusted yeah. three and then he had uh, he had one uh, Nick Ahula who he could bring in the out of the bullpen mm -hmm. and give him a couple good hits. So that was the thing. Pat Smith trusted his pitching. Eddie Lozner trusted his mm -hmm. pitching. He knew he was going to get top efforts from those guys 
And because of that, you had some of the better baseball teams that this area has produced, yeah. especially in recent years. Absolutely, and I, that's what I think is going to be interesting going forward. Is we saw it a little bit last year. It, 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 there's just no dominant team, and I think that's been a little bit indicative of not just maybe the Big East, but sort of our area this year. Yeah. This, this this school year has yeah. been, you know, if you go from football to basketball to baseball, with apologies to Hunt, who made another run in boys basketball to the, the uh, regional finals, mm -hmm. we didn't really think you would make it that far, to be perfectly honest. That's no disrespect to you. We no, just didn't think no, no. you were as good as the team that went to the state finals last year. You came out live in the playoffs and did really, really well. I mean, when you go on the road and hold the number three seed in the East to like 30 points, that's really good. Even though, just to be completely yeah. honest, when it's South Brunswick or one yeah. of the Brunswick teams, they usually are high seeds based on the fact that they play in a 3A, 2A conference yeah. and they decimate 2A teams and they play 3A teams and get their tails stomped. Yeah. But, still anyway, on the road. but still, that was, I will say that was the best team performance we got out of a team this year. You know, yeah. it, the one dominant team we had was Northern Nash Girls. Yeah. And then that yeah. just. I still haven't figured out what happened with that yet. Yeah. That was just, oh, wait, they're doing great. What? They lost? Yeah. What do you mean they lost? How did they lose? Yeah. I don't think, right now, Grover Battle might not still be able to yeah. tell you how they lost. Um, but that was your closest team. That was your closest dominant team this year. Tarboro Football. It, they were, once again, fine in the conference. Tarboro's had a couple years where they've been on a downswing. Mm -hmm. Now that said, yeah, their downswing is still going undefeated and winning their conference every yeah. year and blowing most of their conference rivals out. But on a, you know, they're they're more like, they are more like Manchester City. If we yeah. want to get Ireland, yeah. yeah. yes, we know you can be dominant in the league. Yes. What do you do in Europe? Go here when Europe. Go yeah. in Europe. Europe being, of course, the state playoffs. Yes. So, um, you, you know, they have not been a great European team the last few no, years. They really haven't. Um, but yeah. Jeff Craddock has Europe written all over him, if you ask me. Yes, he does. Well, he's been there, and he actually has won it. Oh, that's right. He's lived at Old Big Years a few times. Yes, he has. <gasps> uh, but I think that's just, you know, it's, you know, we had Southern Ash, who won the Big East this year, after starting off fairly mm -hmm. mediocrely, to say and that's, you know, why Brian Foster ended up being our Charles Austin Memorial Coach of the Year. Yep. Because of the way he turned that team around, a team that still dealt with injuries, which I guess he's yeah. used to by now, <laughs> and and still find that found themselves a way to win the Big East Conference, uh -huh. which, while having no great teams, was a very they were solid outside of one, was a very balanced conference. Third balance. You know, even Northern very Nash, solid. if you weren't careful, could give you trouble. Yeah. And you you had you have four teams capable of anything. Yeah. You had one team who was close to being able to put a few wins together and you have one team that was one team but anyway um but that's more what you saw this year that you've seen out of the big east is solid parody solid yeah parody solid yes. no one's a world beater everyone is capable of going and beating someone yes and this even means out of conference yeah you know, they're capable of you know, northern nash is capable of going and beating dh conley on a one-day basis mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to do it uh, day in, day out, personally. But they are capable of doing it. Fike Oh, Fike certainly if capable. I don't, I don't think we, we expected them to win the game they lost in the other uh, state playoffs. But it wouldn't have shocked us if they did. No. I think it was Northern Guilford they lost to. Yeah. So, you know, I, we wouldn't have been surprised if they had beaten them. We also wouldn't have been surprised if they lost. It was a very even matchup. There we go. And that's, that's kind of what we're seeing. I think I think a little bit west we just we kind of Tarboro just kind of spoiled us for a few years. Well, Tarboro and Hunt being as dominant oh, as they were well, over yeah, Gridiron, yeah, Rocky Mount being as dominant as they were, and, and then and Hunt coming right after them yeah. and going to a state championship game. Yeah, yeah we just we, we've had a great run here in the the tri counties, yeah. where you know Nash County's been good at something, Edgecombe's been good at something. Wilson's been good at something, yeah. <laughs> and it, it it has it's been a lot of fun. It's been a great ride, um, but right now it's kind of we're in a coming back to earth state. Yes. Now that said, don't don't quote us for 2015, 2016 no. because the craziness could be right back. I really. I hear I hear Tarver is loaded. Yes. <laughs> so Tarver yeah, thinks they've got the best football team for a while. So oh, football preview! I can't wait. I'm actually I'm excited already about high school football. I'm actually in two a little bit. Ooh. See Jeff Craddock again? Yeah. 
I always vote for us. Um, but anyway, okay, enough, enough of that. Enough of that sub box. Yeah. Get my box out of here. Um, folks, we uh, tried to get up with Jimmy Lewis about coming on and talking a little bit with us about the Wilson County stance. Uh, Jimmy just texted me back. He has been at the beach. Aw, good for him. <laughs> How dare you? Sorry. Um, so Sorry anyway, we care about this show more than you do. Totally. Yeah. Uh, but one thing we were going to ask Jimmy about was yeah. the uh, Fike had their Hall of Fame induction. Yes, they did. This coming up uh, this past week. Mm -hmm. um, and Ed, you've got the story up from uh, Paul Durham, yes. sports editor of the Wilson Times. And why don't you let the folks at home know a little bit about what happened at Fike? Yep. Three members of the uh, 2015 induction class actually came from their uh, championship basketball team from 1983-1984 season. Uh, Dr. Brian Harris, Charles Howard, and John McNeil. Again, those three guys going into the Fike High Athletic Hall of Fame uh, this past Saturday night. And uh, very, very big moment for all of them. Um, George Wainwright also entered the Hall of Fame. Uh, he has the most impressive postgraduate resume of any of the 66 members, according to Paul Durham. He was uh, an exceptional football player, a pretty good basketball and baseball player. Um, he also then went on to the University of North Carolina on a Moorhead scholarship, which, you know, haven't had anybody do that lately, but that involves. Uh, after graduation... Kip from, from Rocky Mountain Academy this year. Yeah. Uh, after graduation, he managed a successful agribusiness real estate insurance company in Wilson before going to Wake Forest University School of Law in his 30s. And then he went on to become a district court, superior court, and North Carolina Supreme Court justice. So you go to law school in your 30s? Really? I could. I can do that. I need, a, I need someone to retain her. Yeah. I'll go, I'm, I want to go study business law and then become a general manager. Oh, you can hire me to do your announcing. I would. Future is set. Do you, th you think? Uh, do you think? Um, what chair, uh, oh. What's his face over at Boston would hire me? Charrington. Yeah. Dude, he'd hire you, and then you'd uh, usurp his power. Yes. And then, and then I help. saw you as the Fenway announcer. And don't forget who comes to Fenway every few years. The Mighty Reds. I know you'd love that. Uh, also, uh, Jimmy Tillman, former Fike principal and current athletic director of Wilson County Schools, mm -hmm. also went in. Um, he was inducted by Richie Pridgen on the night. Uh, and again, there's now 66 people in the hall. We talked about three in the beginning. Uh, eight went in this past Saturday night. Um, there were also a bunch of previous inductees at Saturday's banquet, including Ken Boykin, Walter Brown, Carl Esther Crumpler. Who? Crump! Crumpler. He's power, baby! Algernon Darius Crumpler is his son. Gilbert Farrell, Trisha Farrell, Frank Galloway, Lee Galarmus, who uh, we actually got to talk to when he went into the North Carolina State Hall of Fame this past year. Man, it makes a heck of a hot dog. <laughs> I, also, I would appreciate it if he got a credit card reader, but besides that, he makes a great hot dog. We don't ask for much here. We don't ask for much. Just uh, know that next time I might not be able to pay for my meal. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Yeah, Doug, <laughs> that's true. Dr. Tyson Jennett, Bob Paroli, William Pyler, Lennox Rawlings, Russell Rawlings, Janine, Jenny, sorry, Edmondson Robertson, Mo Ruffin, Henry Trevathan, Dennis Wilkerson, and George Wilkerson. Uh, Henry Trevathan, of course, head coach of three straight state championship teams at Fike, uh, where Carl Esser Crumpler was his best player. Trevathan, of course, cut his teeth with the Rocky Mount Blackbirds in the early 60s by winning back-to-back -back state titles. Absolutely. And uh, also another gentleman you mentioned in there, Bob Paroli. At this point, I believe Parola is the all-time winningest head coach in North Carolina football history. Wow. That's right. Paroli, a fable legend as well. Mm -hmm. Just won a state title 71st few years ago. Um, Fish also noted that the North Carolina uh, State Hall of Fame has 13 members with ties to Wilson. Uh, there are Leon Brogdon, Bill Brooks, George Clark, Tom Davis, Tom Parham, Paul Gay, Bun Hearn, Alan White, and then Trevathan, Reed, Galarmus, and Crumpler, who are on the night there, those four guys. So it's a very, very cool thing, and uh, congratulations to those eight guys going Absolutely. into the Fike Hall of Fame. And I'm going to tell you, that is, to me, as, a, as an outsider of Fike, that is one of the coolest things. When you get to Fike a little early and you can walk down that hall, yeah. they actually have a hall. Yes. It's a hallway. It's a literal hall it's of a fame. It's a literal hall of fame. You walk down the hall and they've got all these cool pictures up and everything. It's really neat. Um, there have been some talk about doing a Hall of Fame at Rocky Mount. Uh, I don't know where that stands at the moment. Uh, good they friend of the show. They have that uh, trophy case, but they don't oh, have well that. Well, they do. Hall yeah. um, they had, it, it was really pushing along when uh, Charles also was still with us. Yes. Uh, Charles, was, I know, was going to be an integral part of that because he was basically he an encyclopedia. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, of course, Charles no longer with us. I haven't heard anything else about it in the last couple of years. But uh, 
Fike did it. They did it a good while back, and it is an amazing event every year for the Fike Hall of Fame. So, a great thing that they do with Fike. Yes. Uh, well, I think with that, uh, we should take a commercial break. And then uh, when we come back, we'll have uh, your Bishop's Corner segment uh, where we had some annual award ceremonies as well as maybe a little bit mm -hmm. of news on where a couple of our teams might be playing uh, in the NCAA. NCAA. Mm -hmm. Gotta get out of high school for a second. NCAA State uh, National Playoffs. Yes, National Playoffs. Uh, might have a little bit of news there as well as, again, their award ceremony, their 50th annual award ceremony. Uh, we'll also, of course, have uh, some talk about baseball. Uh, one of our favorite players in the news with maybe a possible trade looming. And, uh, of course, when we come out of the break, the most exciting minute of your week. Not and so my goodness, okay. was it was an exciting Sunday morning for some people. Saturday not so exciting for no. uh, Well, I was... I wasn't entertained. I wasn't. I know you weren't. But we'll get to that. Uh, you want to take some break? Absolutely, folks. We are going to take a quick break. This is the all new sports show brought to you by Roger G. Taylor and Associates. We'll be right back here on WHIG TV. The new place is perfect. Or at least it will be with a little help from Dex. In the book or at DexKnows.com. Dex can help you get results fast and deliver the best local advice so you can get it done right. Right here, right now. We should do this more often. Dex, results for the here and now. The WHIG TV Karaoke Show is moving to an all new night, Tuesdays at 9.30. Catch all your favorite singers from Zaxby's every Tuesday at 9.30 and Saturday at 9.30. Only on WHIG TV. We welcome everyone back to the all-new sports show brought to you each and every week by Roger G. Taylor Associates right here on WHIG WHIG TV. We both speak English for a living. I speak English. I couldn't get out NCHS earlier and he can't get out our station letters. What was that? What was that, Diego? <laughs> it's, of course, our Raven Diego. Yes. Uh, named for an off-injured Chelsea striker. Who's not playing today. He's not playing today. You said what? Well, Folks, Diego says it's time for your most exciting minute of the week. It's time for 60 seconds of soccer. The team who came back from the dead. I think we are the team that came back from the dead. Explosure. Gotta Tried work. to kill us off many times on this channel. Unfortunately, there's no one else to take our spot. It's true. No one else wants it. Nope. All right, Ed, 60 seconds on the clock. Folks, what can I say for Liverpool? Season's over. <laughs> Far to the crapper. No trophies. No top four. No return to the Champions League. <laughs> Just some of the bunch of old guys. Yeah, you know. For some reason, we keep playing. Uh, Brendan Rodgers. Buh. Buddy. Bubba. Scrap the old guys. Bye, Glenn Johnson. Bye, Barini. Bring up Cameron Brannigan. Bring up my boy Jordan Rossiter. Let's infuse some lifeblood into this group. Let's get ready for next season. Pelosi, he's a U.S. player. We want to see him, too. Uh, Tottenham, of course, with a exciting, enthralling 2-2 draw at the uh, St. Mary's place yesterday against Southampton. Maurizio Pochettino going against his former club, doing a very nice job there. Keeping us in the hunt. Or maybe if we can beat Man City next week, maybe maybe that Champions League spot isn't totally dead yet. Or maybe City can put us out of our misery and send us out of Europa too. Drive for fifth. It's a it's a it's a win win. We either beat City and get three points closer to a Champions League spot, or we lose and we fall into seventh and out of Europa. Win win. You're not falling out of Europa because Arsenal's win the FA Cup. No, believe in Timmy tactics. <sighs> I don't. Not at all. Ed, one final word on um, 60 Seconds of Soccer. Yeah. Dos Acero. Yes. Part 2. 
my park quattro at this point. <laughs> Just do it over and over. We did it again, Mexico. Also, is uh, Oscar... No, I was about to say, is Oscar playing a false nine, but he just came off to start the second half. Four? Drama. Oh, great. Because we need geriatric play. Da, 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 da. Oh, me. Arsenal, Chelsea, folks. Uh, can you notice we, uh, we are recording this yes. show? Um, this is totally live. What are you talking about? Totally plausibly live. This is a big one, right? Extreme rules that Wes doesn't miss. Uh, so as we speak, folks, we are keeping an eye on Ed's uh, laptop computer here. Uh, Arsenal nil, Chelsea nil, 47th minute, all you excited people at home. Yep. If you don't know the result, go to NBC Sport and find out. Yeah. That's all, that's all I can really tell you. This or listen to the All New Sports of the Podcast this went Thursday when we'll be breaking it down. No bitterness will be involved this Thursday. <laughs> no. Guarantee you that. Yeah. If you thought last week's episode of the pod was uh, was bitter from Wes. I think I just broke three of my fingers here. Yeah. So. yeah. Fantastic. Get ready for an all new level of bitter hate this week. Oh, it's true. Uh, you want to do uh, Bishop's Corner? Why would I not want to do Bishop's Corner? If I have to be in a corner, I'd like to be in the bishop's corner. It's true. He'll, he'll battle your way out. I'll battle my way out of the corner for the bishops. Uh, nobody puts bishops in the corner. Uh, the North Carolina Wesleyan Department of Athletics hosted its 50th annual award ceremony uh, just a few days ago on Thursday. That's cute that they got to 50. I mean, we got to 50 on the podcast a week or two ago. It's, but, you know, it's nice they got to 50 as well. Good job, guys. It's not a competition. Of course, we also do ours weekly. That's so. true. <laughs> uh, they held it in Ninja's Otter of the Dunn Center. I wanted to say Ninja's Coliseum. It's not Ninja's Coliseum. Uh, they did show a 50th anniversary uh, Wesley video. It was, I'm sure it's very nice. Uh, they then honored uh, a couple athletics and teams. Uh, North Carolina Wesleyan College boasted 41 USA South all-conference selection, four players of the year, two All-Americans, four USA South championships, and two NCAA tournament firsts, which I believe are both going to one sport. Uh, okay. Highlight of the Night's winners were the honors given for male and female student athletes of the year, along with male and female athletes of the year. Uh, and we will give you that list now. We'll start at the bottom, and then we're here. Oh, you and Drake. Yeah. Is he a Wizards fan now? I think so. Sure. He also might be a Duke fan now. Well, it was a Kentucky fan. In, um, that yeah. ended quickly. That crashed Then he became a Wisconsin quickly. fan, and then he became a Duke fan. Oh, he's just, he's just going right at the levels, isn't he? Yep. Uh, we start at the bottom. Men's tennis. In the bottom of the list. We don't mean in terms of importance. No. At the bottom of the list. We'll work all the way up. Uh, men's tennis. The Mobauer Sportsmanship Award went to Sebastian Sick. The Scholar Athlete Award went to Mark Sokolov. And the Most Valuable Player win Award went to Robert Kielberg. Three uh, fine, upstanding local lads from North Carolina, yeah. I'm sure. The, the Nordic, uh, the Nordic Nadals. Nordic connection. Yeah. Uh, wins, women's tennis, the Mo Bauer Sportsmanship Award went to Valeria Bar Berber. The Co Scholar Athlete Awards went to Rachel Hui and Fernanda Orona. And the Most Valuable Player Award went to Natalia Lopez. We have the Latin connection in women's tennis. <laughs> the Latin Nadals. Latin Nadals. Which is sort of redundant. Latin Nadals, because the Nadal is the Latin Nadal. Yes. Anyway, continue. Uh, softball, the Mobile Sportsmanship Award went to Abigail Leonard. Scholar Athlete Award went also to Abigail Leonard. And the MVP Award went to Jasmine Edgren. Uh, in golf, the Sportsmanship Award went to Matthew May. Scholar Athlete Award went to Tommy Nakamura. And the MVP Award went to David White. In baseball, Sportsmanship Award went to Will Graves. Scholar Athlete went to Macon Hammond. And MVP went to Ciro Norzagare. 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 Ciro. Ciro Figus. Uh, in men's basketball, the Sportsmanship Award went to Jesse Simpson. And the Scholar Athlete Award and MVP Award both went to DJ Weaver. On the women's side, the Sportsmanship Award went to Jordan Cager. Scholar Athlete Award went to Shakina Huggins. And the MVP Award went to Kenyatta Harris. Uh, in cross country, the Sportsmanship Award and the Scholar Athlete Awards both went to Connor Wright. In volleyball, the Sportsmanship Award went to Evie Hunter. The Scholar Athlete Award went to Whitney Graves. And the MVP Award went to Christina Huber. Uh, in men's soccer, uh, Sportsmanship Award went to Igor Kabailin. Uh, and the Scholar Athlete Award and MVP Award went to Drew Wiltz. Or, I'm sorry, Wiltz. 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 Don't know if he's German, but he is to me. Don't know if he's French. 
Uh, in women's soccer, the sportsmanship award went to Ashley Dunn. Scholar athlete award went to Sarah Olsowski. Absolutely. Ospina. Probably baby Ospina. And the MVP award went to Rebecca Staler. Uh, in football, which we were intimately familiar with. Or as we call American football. Yes, American football. American football. Uh, the Sportsmanship Award went to Albert Rayner. Scholar Athlete Award went to Dustin Midget. Uh, the Offensive MVP was Jock Alston. Shock. Shock. Defensive MVP was James Wallace. Shock. Sure. Uh, the Co-Male Athletes of the Year were Jock Alston and Robert Kilberg. Uh, again, that Nordic connection. Female Athlete of the Year coming out women's tennis was Natalia Lopez. Yeah, Jock Alston, nothing about Nordic. <laughs> <laughs> All the way from Kinley. Yeah. Home of the Nordics. Uh, the, male, the male student athlete of the year was Drew Viltz and men's soccer. And the female student athlete of the year was Rebecca Staler. So congratulations to all of them Absolutely. on their awards. Uh, we want to get a little more information. Uh, the Battling Bishops men's tennis team is not quite done yet, though. They had a win against Johns Hopkins uh, this past Saturday, winning 8-1 up in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Let's see what's wrong with Johns Hopkins right now. They banned Chick-fil-A from the campus. Yeah. It's going to do nothing but anger student athletes who love Chick-fil-A. Yeah, that's what's wrong with them. Uh, the, the, of course, with this uh, awards banquet, most teams now have wrapped up their seasons. Uh, women's softball ended their run at the USA Tourney, losing a pair of games to Huntingdon and Averitt. Uh, were you on the call for either of those ones? Averitt, 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 number one seed, came into that game 31-1. and one. Oh, that's pretty good. Ranked, I believe, 15th in the country. Um, they looked it. They looked it. Good team. Uh, so their season ends there. Uh, the men's team uh, also ended their season at the Spring Festival. No USA South Baseball tournament. We call, we call it the Spring Fling. The Spring Fling. Uh, they lost a series to Methodist 8-3, 8-3, 11-1 to close out their season at 10-26 and 8-20 and and in USA South play. Uh, they wrapped up their golf season at the USA South Championship. They finished, uh, which was held at Benvenue Country Club here, they finished eighth place, uh, finishing, I believe, just six strokes behind Avery for seven. So tough, tough break there for the guys. Um, they were paced by David White, a freshman, who wins 75, 74, 81, and he finished 21st overall individually. Uh, but then it, the, uh, the tennis team saved the day for you, uh, Wesleyan. They picked up a pair of awards. The Wesleyan men win their seventh straight tournament crown. Nordic! Uh, and had four people on the all-tournament team. Uh, they were Andres Gomez, Fernando Nardelli, uh, Fabio Pereira, and of course, Robert Kielberg. No mixed discarood? No mixed discarood. Okay. Uh, the women's tennis team claimed their first title, uh, and we'll have to women. See, and uh, they put also four people on the all tournament team: Rachel Cui, Natalia Lopez, Sofia Gonzalez, and Valeria Barber. So, congratulations to them. Uh, we'll see. Latino Heat. Uh, it looks like we will not get seedings on them. They're both teams when they go into the NCAA tournament until about early May. So we are still waiting on that. However, we do know uh, that their uh, tournament will be starting May 8th. It's my birthday, Which, folks. Uh, it's happy, happy birthday to West. Happy birthday to West. We should go cover the, them at the NCAA regional. So let's pay for it. I will definitely go to it. Women's, of course. Women's too. The ladies. We'll do, we'll do. I'll do Nordic Messi. That's fine. I'll do the Latino Heat. <laughs> Calling them that? Absolutely. Um, so that's a hot name, Latino. That's going to do it for uh, Bishop's Corner here on the day. Congratulations to all the award winners. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to the fine teams we had this spring season, and good luck uh, going up to the uh, the men's and women's tennis teams as they progress in the NCAA tournament. And your winner of the ladies' softball tournament this year, the adopted team of the Elder Sports Wait, Show. Wait, really? Lagrange gets it done. They beat Avery. Oh, dude, Avery got knocked out. Um, some other quarterfinals. Oh, wow. Yeah. LaGrange. LaGrange? LaGrange. What, what were the... Even, even, even what though they were they? Uh, four seed this year. Wow. Even though their coach, uh, literally every inning, if her pitcher gave up a hit, she came out for a visit to the mound. 
Didn't get annoying at all. Certain. Didn't get annoying at all. I'm we sure. Grange your champions this year. I'm sure I didn't. But again, if you want to go check that out, uh, either visit ncwcsports.com mm -hmm. or visit usasouth.net. Uh, they'll have they have video recaps of the tournament weekend, uh, and you can also a softball video recap. Yeah. Wonder if it has any of uh, Wes Bradshaw's announcing of the. Uh, We'll, 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 take a look later. we'll take a look later. It might. You look, I'm not. I'm so self conscious of this. Yes, you are. You're, you're just, you, you can't handle it. That, I'm completely lazy. Yeah. That's true. Um, so, of course, big news coming out of Major League Baseball this past week. Uh, hasn't been officially announced yet. Still working out the details, but one of our favorite stories slash players. Hambone! Josh Hamilton? Hamilton. Oh, okay. I didn't know that's what he was called. That's why he's one of my favorite players. By me? Uh, <laughs> oh, just you? Well, let me, I, I, I seem to remember someone else calling that. I may be wrong. One other person. Uh, Josh Hamilton, of course, the embattled outfielder for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Uh, just had a relapse this past offseason. And now the Angels trying to desperately... Um, Unload him. Yes, that's that's the actual term. Shed salary. Yep. Uh, he is might be going back to the Texas Rangers, where he broke in the big leagues. And it's going to be very interesting to see how... Uh, well, well, we'll say he got his... He had his best years as a Ranger. Yeah. Broke in, actually, for the Cincinnati Bay. Reds. Oh, I think Cincinnati. Never met for Tampa Bay. Yeah. And then um, Cincinnati got him, I believe it was a Rule 5. Mm -hmm. And um, had, a, had a really good year in Cincinnati. And then... Uh, mm -hmm. They trade him to the Rangers. Yep. Uh, right now, the Rangers uh, will take on less than seven million of the ninety-three million dollars remaining on Hamilton's contract. Uh, and if it's finalized, it's expected Hamilton will join the Rangers once he completes his rehab from February shoulder surgery, not rehab from something else. Uh, so you're paying less than seven million to get potentially a guy who is a former MVP and potentially still has that ability. Mm -hmm. That's good business. Rangers are not known for good business, but that's good business. Absolutely. That you know, that's it's it's basically a fire at that point. You know, well, you got nothing to lose for less than seven million bucks. No. Um, and of course, uh, Hamilton made news when he was still there by saying the Rangers don't have real fans. Taken slightly out of context, but hey, he might be going uh, back there. We'll find out how that context was taken yeah. as soon as he shows back. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's been a rough time, but it's I, I think it's needed because the Angels. We talked about this on the podcast. Didn't the front office didn't really seem like they wanted him anymore They're after pretty clear. I believe. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like, we don't want him. Basically, that was almost their exact terms. Yeah, uh, they. I'm pretty sure they didn't want him really after he really underperformed last year after signing a gigantic contract extension, which, by the way, Anaheim, that's kind of your fault. Those never go wrong, pay paying guys in their early to mid-30s uh, massive seven, eight-year contracts. Yeah. Those never you go wrong. You literally have Albert Pujols playing first base from you, getting injured the first year in his deal, and you say, you know what we should do? We should give uh, Hamilton Max contract. It's not another guy. The only person that Max deal works for uh, over the long run is Alex Rodriguez, and that's because he literally has to take a year off. Yeah. yeah if he hadn't taken last year off, man, then of course by Major League Baseball. <laughs> not just an idea. Uh, you know, he's probably broken down this year, too. Absolutely. So that's what's kind of going on. Is that an Olsen clip? No. Oh, okay. That's what's going on with the whole Josh Hamilton story, and of course, we, we hope he gets better. And Absolutely. We, we like seeing him on the field. Uh, I mean, still to this day, the 2010 uh, Home Run Derby in New York. Oh, my gosh. Maybe, maybe one of the greatest achievements ever. <laughs> the best, uh, I would say, definitely one of the best power displays of all time. Oh, smart, smart over stuff. Uh, but just a fantastic power header and a guy with so many tools that you just pray that he can pull it back together Absolutely. and uh, make it through there. Uh, quick look at your Major League standings. Right now, a logjam in the American League East. Uh, all five teams separated by just two games. Uh, Yankees, here. Rays, Red Sox all at 10 and 8. Blue Jays, 9 and 9. Orioles, 8 and 10. Fun year in the East. Yeah. It's going to be a lot because no one has great pitching. No. Everyone in that can div division can hit. Yes. Um, yeah, that's going to be a fun year. We're just going to see 10-10 games Ooh. all day. It's not going to be fun for me because I'm going to be sitting there biting my nails down on the quick. 
Uh, Kansas City leads the Central right now in wins and in uh, ejections. Suspensions. It's a feisty bunch. Not non-drug related suspensions. Yes, yeah, non-drug. That's very key. Non-drug related suspensions. Uh, they're followed closely by Detroit, though. They're just one game back. But Minnesota, Chicago, and Cleveland. Chicago and Cleveland, both of, I believe. Did you end up picking Cleveland on the only sports of the podcast? Or did no, you pick Detroit? I picked Detroit. I, I didn't even pick Cleveland in the playoffs. I just said I think they could have a really good year. All right. Six and ten. That's not hard. Not not out of the woods yet. It's still early. Ch- chance to come back. Uh, and Houston leading the West. Yeah, that won't last long. No. And currently Seattle right now in fourth place in the West. Team I believe we both picked to win the division. It's okay. I'm fine. You know what? To be fair, though, just quick tangent. Uh, if the season, the Barclays Premier League season ended today, I would have picked the uh, the relegation zone exactly right. Nice. Sunderland, QPR. Nice. Uh, the New York Mets, surprisingly to some, Matt lead Hart? the National League East. National League. Matt Harvey. You can't you can't pitch Matt Harvey every day though. But they know every fifth day they're going to get Matt Harvey. That's true. So they're like, well, all we got to do is scrap out wins the other days, and Matt Harvey will win on the fifth. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta's currently in second at nine and eight. Miami and Washington. Washington, your preseason World Series favorites. No problem with that. Seven and eleven. Not not abandoning that ship at all. Ship. So I said ship. Yep. Ship. Not abandoning ship at all. Nope. Nope. Uh, <laughs> right. Yep. Right. St. Louis Cardinals, 12 and four, uh, leading the Central. Chicago, nine and seven. Pittsburgh, ten and eight. Cincinnati, eight and nine. Milwaukee, three and fifteen. Didn't I actually pick Milwaukee with <laughs> Did you? Oh Panicked on the central. I just, uh, for some reason, the name St. Louis Cardinals did not come I'm going to have to... Uh, You're going to re-listen it. Yeah. Because I feel like you didn't. I think you might have picked St. Louis. I really hope I did because I know that's what I would have meant to pick. Uh, and in the west, it's the Dodgers leading the way. Colorado and San Diego right now in second. Arizona in fourth. San Francisco <sighs> in last. Chance. Right now, the... Uh, the wild card scenario. Well, we're not going to do the wild card scenarios for me. You're not going to. I don't think they're really doing wild card yet. Why not? Thanks, ESPN. Yeah, because That's why I know. No one needs it at this point. Well, we do. I was about to give them, so I kind of do. Of course. There you go. There we go. Wild card. MLB.com has my back. Who's, who's, who's already given up on the division? Yes. Is up all ready for the wild card. Uh, right now, Kansas City. Uh, technically in the wild card slot. Um, right. that, that, that's last year's standings. It's 2014. 2015. Once again, no one is doing wild card yet. <laughs> so wild card are they even doing too. standings then? Well, let's see. Okay, 2015. There we go. There we Yeah, maybe they're not. Yeah, they are. Who's doing wild card yet, man? It's too early. They don't want you. They want you thinking about the wild card yet. They want you to think my team still has a chance to win the division. Except no, we'll they don't. So but do you think Milwaukee has a chance to win the division right now at three and fifteen? Milwaukee doesn't have a chance to win a wild card at this point. That's true. They're just done. They're bad. They need to. Yeah, they need bad. to unload Ryan Braun, which I'm sure that'll be easy to do with his gigantic contract and his history of <laughs> PED usage. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. So, um, uh, what do you think, Diego? <laughs> Horse plus sensor, you say? We got about uh, we got about five minutes left in the show. Man, what do we talk about? Uh, you want to talk about NBA playoffs and how Marcus Smart showed up late today when the Celtics got swept out of the playoffs by Cleveland. What are we talking about? Most we love Todd Gurley. We do love Todd Gurley. You want to talk about the NFL draft? God, yeah, screw the NBA. It's crap. And the NFL isn't. No, not when Todd Gurley's going. Well, that's you know what. You know we're what? We're not really talking about the NFL. We're we're talking about Todd Gurley. You know right? what? Fair enough. Thank you. That's point that's fair. made. Folks, this Thursday, the annual uh, cow call begins for the we NFL. Call it? Sure, cow sure. call. Uh, the uh, horn, the, 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 the dog and like pony it. show. Yeah, we'll call it that. The annual dog and pony show. No, it's the NFL draft. Begins this Thursday with the first round televised live on sure ESPN Everywhere. or something. Yeah, but whatever. Don't watch it. We'll be we'll we won't be live tweeting it, but don't watch it. Either. I will be live tweeting one name, yes, one name will. only. And until he is picked, I will tell every team how they have screwed up and not picked the right player. Except the Jets. Don't tell them they screwed up. No, not they the Jets. make the right call. The Jets need to take anyone but. Uh, unfortunately, I've now seen him on two mock drafts going the Jets. Oh, Look, Ty Gurley, you're uh, all everything. Mr. Incredible, um, Superman slash Batman slash 
uh, the Flash slash Captain America. Slash. Oh, slash uh, Captain Kirk. Okay, whatever you want. Uh, all in one, he's back, folks. That ACL injury, don't worry about it. It's good. He's good. He's good. Guess what he can do now? He can fly again. He's got his moves. It's going to be fine. Todd Gurley has gone from, uh, you know, I believe it was November when he when he hurt his knee. Yeah. We were saying, well, you know, maybe someone will still take a flyer on him in the second round. Gotcha. Todd Gurley has now shot his way in about the top ten of the draft again, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, mock drafts. I've seen two this morning. Have him going number six to the New York Jets. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was uh, Todd McShay's. Fifth mock draft. The think. other I've seen is number five, number ten, excuse me, to the St. Louis Rams, which I'd be much happier with. Much happier with. Much happier with. Um, just all oh, the Jets. The Jets are just there to ruin careers, and we sure don't want that for Todd Gurley. We want Todd to be awesome. Uh, if Todd Gurley is indeed a first round pick, uh, folks, if I'm wrong, hey, shoot us something at the Twitter page yep. at, at All New Sports Show. Yeah, That's um, right. you got it. Thank you. Two, three years on, I finally figured out the Twitter page. Good for you. Folks, shoot us something at the Twitter page, but I want to say Tiger will be the second Twin County, that's Nash Edgecombe County, player selected in the first round of the NFL draft. The other, of course, a little guy you may remember by the name of Julius Peppers out of Pretty Southern good. Nash, who was the number two pick in, in his respective draft. Um... Yeah, also, if I'm not wrong, I believe Gurley will be the first uh, player from Edgecombe County ever selected in the first round of the draft. Of course, you know, other notable Edgecombe County players, uh, Kelvin Bryant, mm -hmm. who was actually not, well, I don't believe he was drafted in the NFL because he went to the uh, USFL right. um, and played a few years before finally going to the Washington Redskins. Uh, Sean Drawn, a guy who's played with the Kansas City Chiefs, but he was an undrafted uh, free agent. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know Yancey Thigpen, of course, played in a Super Bowl for the Titans from Southwest Edgecombe. I, I don't know where he was drafted. I can pretty much guarantee he was not in the first round, though, out of a out of a one double A school. But if you know, <laughs> if you know, if you know someone else, let us know. The only one I can think of from Nash County was once again um, Julius Peppers. J.J. Arrington was a second round pick to the Arizona Cardinals. So we're looking first round guys. If you got us a first rounder, let us know. And of course, real quick before we wrap up, Montrez Harrell might be going as a first round pick in the NBA draft this year. I think, that, I think that is about a, as big of a no doubt as there will be. You know, I think it, some it, questions well, up here, but yeah. Well, NBA draft is so different because you're looking for immediate impact guys, yeah. and you only have two rounds. And you only have two rounds. Montrez Harrell is going to be a first round pick unless one of his legs falls off between now and the draft, uh, which with the NBA never, never, never say. Never, but um, I believe Ty Gurley going to be a first rounder, and um, as a lot of people are saying, maybe the most dangerous offensive player yeah. in the draft. He stays healthy. So good whoever time. gets him is going to get a stud. They're going to get a good one. Yep. So that was a lot better than any NBA talk. Yeah, it was actually. Even though uh, Warriors, they're good. Yep, Steph Curry's good. That's going to do it for us here on the All New Sports Show. So check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, check out our podcast, uh, episode 52. A full year of podcasts now will be available for you this Thursday. Uh, don't listen to the pilot. Um, but Assault! Go, go to NGSCSports.com to find out more about that. Uh, anything else? Um, anything to add to that? Uh, let's check out your baseball this week. Yes. Well, we should be Hopefully some, we'll be on Friday. Should be some really nice days coming up, especially later in the week. It's supposed to be a gorgeous weekend, gorgeous beginning of next week. Mm -hmm. If the mythical Big East Conference Tournament <laughs> actually gets underway and is played this year, go out and check it out, folks. Still some really fun baseball to watch. Hey, the, the best thing about this league, you don't know who's going to win. Yeah. There's no... It's not the old days when it was Rose and everybody played for second. Yeah, you don't have that going this year. Let's go check out some baseball, folks. High school, high school is just about over. You know, uh, Rocky Mountain. I know had their problem last night. Oh, yeah, Saturday. Yeah, they had their problem. Um, so you know, you're getting toward the end of the school year now. Uh, last time you get a chance to see some of these kids uh, perform, uh, maybe ever. That's for a lot of them, they don't. They go to college, but they don't go to play, and then they go pro in something other than sports. Yeah. So says the NCAA uh, 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 media right. bullcrap wagon. Diego, anything to add? <sighs> Go Chelsea. Ah, whatever, Diego. All right. All right, Ed, so we're looking to be at Rocky Mountain Northern Nash Friday night. Hope so. So um, that's what you should look for next week on the show. I'm hoping to make my season debut under the baseball lights. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll have some fun. Yep. All right. 
folks for uh, people. The <laughs> this is job. Yeah. Is Lee here? Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, name producer Lee. <laughs> I haven't seen you, but thanks for doing what you do, my man. Folks, he's A. Green. I'm Wes Bradshaw. We will see you folks back here next week on the All New Sports Show brought to you by Roger G. Town Associates right here on WHIG TV. Good night, America! Good night, America.